Did you know that disability carriers like Lincoln National, Cigna, and Unum are hoping that you make mistakes in your short or long-term disability application so that they can say, too bad, so sad, we've got to deny your claim because of what you put in your application. In this two-part video, I'm going to talk about the common mistake that disability policyholders make when they're applying for shorter long-term disability benefits because they just don't know any better and they didn't think they needed an attorney to help them. Applying for disability insurance benefits is nothing like applying for insurance coverage to begin with. There are tons of traps in the disability insurance forms. You just don't know where those traps are. Now, I know the forms seem simple and self-explanatory, but they're not. So one of the things I think you need to do right from the very start is to read the application cover to cover. Many times I will find that people are asked what the disabling medical condition is and they put down the wrong condition or they don't list all of the disabling conditions and they don't explain that there might be a combination of conditions that result in them being disabled. Another mistake is dealing with questions about psychiatric conditions. You need to know that there's probably in the policy a 24-month mental nervous uh, limitation. So you need to understand that policy limitation in correctly answering questions about any psychiatric problems you have. Another issue is the job description. You're asked to provide information about your occupation, but what you really should be doing is looking at the definition of occupation in the, uh, in the policy. So in other words, does the policy define the uh, occupation as it's performed by your employer, performed locally, performed in the national economy, or performed based on the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. You need to get that clear in your mind, and if you're dealing with the uh, description of your occupation as performed by the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, you gotta get the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, identify your occupation, and I think you gotta compare it to what the DOT says and what your employer says the job is. Why? The DOT hasn't been updated in many, many years, and so you want to make sure that you are explaining your job duties not only consistently with the DOT, but that you're supplementing it or correcting it based on uh, what your employer's job description is, or better yet, how you're actually performing it. Well, why is that important? Because you're gonna be asked to explain your job duties, and generally it's only in terms of your physical abilities. I think that's a mistake. I think that you need to think about how you perform your job, not only uh, physically in terms of bending, sitting, stooping, walking, but you also have to explain the cognitive requirements of your occupation. And you also, I think, have to explain the psychological basis of your occupation. In other words, your need to interact with others, uh, your need to uh, perhaps supervise them, uh, your uh, need to deal with change in the work uh, setting. So once you sort of got that highlight done, I actually like my clients to think backwards by thinking about the medical conditions that keep them from doing the material and substantial duties of your occupation. And so I want my clients to make a list of, for example, their medical conditions. So they might have fibromyalgia. So we want to list all the symptoms of the fibromyalgia that they're having, but then think about the occupational duties that the fibromyalgia prevents them from doing, because I want to make sure that that's actually listed in the uh, occupation description of your application. That's also important because ultimately your doctor is going to be asked to render an opinion about your ability to do the material and substantial duties of your occupation. And you want to make sure that your doctor understands not only those duties, but the problems that you are having physically, cognitively, and psychiatrically in the dealing with your own occupation. So those are just three traps that you can see in the initial application. And if you are going to do that on your own, good luck. I really think that you need an experienced attorney such as myself to make sure that we and you understand the terms of the policy, what you have to prove, and that your application is tailored not only to uh, prove what you need to do pursuant to the terms of the policy, but more importantly, from a medical and a vocational standpoint, we've set this claim up for success because we are outlining the um, vocational duties that you're doing, the medical problems that you have doing, uh, doing those, the symptoms that you have that prevent you from 
doing those occupational duties. And you can give not only the carrier a clear history, but you can give your doctor. It takes teamwork to get your benefits. Give me a call at 727-894-3188 for a complimentary consultation and to learn more about how you can file a winning short or long-term disability application. Join me next for part two.